Hey y'all, here at OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Bonsai Mini Smart DLP Projector. This is a Pico projector that's about the size of a Rubik's Cube, so very small and compact. You can wirelessly mirror the screen from your phone, tablet, or computer over to it using Wi-Fi, and it also has built-in Bluetooth so you can connect to wireless headphones, or you can also connect to a larger speaker, even though there's already a small speaker built on in. Now technically it's running on Android version 7. Point one. So there is a built-in system, so you can use it to download some apps, you can do some YouTube and Netflix watching without even having to connect to a phone or a computer. As far as the technical specs, the battery will run for about 2.5 hours, which really isn't bad considering the super tiny size of this thing. And you can always bring along a power bank to plug it in and keep it running for a few extra hours. The native resolution is about 480p, but it can support video input up to full HD resolution. So we have a quick user manual here. We also have the projector, which is just sitting right on top. Additional accessories include a charging cable. It is using micro USB here. And finally, there is the remote control, which is made out of a soft touch rubber material, actually, which makes it feel pretty grippy and comfortable. Uh, it takes two AAA batteries to operate. So here is the projector. It really is super tiny and cute. Um, otherwise, if we take a closer look, the body is made out of a coarse polycarbonate, but it feels incredibly solid. The front here just features the lens along with an IR sensor for detecting the remote control. And then on the side here, we have ventilation grills. There is a very small fan that can kick in to prevent the projector from overheating. And then we have some ports. USB here can take a thumb drive if you want to read back files on it. There's also the micro USB for charging and a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to use headphones, but uh, you don't want to use Bluetooth. And then on the very top is basically the power key. It's uh, accented and very tactile, easy to press. The other side features a focus dial for adjusting, again, the focus of the lens, depending on how far away you are from your projected wall. It can go all the way up to 150 inches, 200 inches without too many issues, although the further that you get, the dimmer the image gets. So in my experience, around 80 to 100 inches is what it works best in, in terms of picture quality. There's also what looks like a cutout for a HDMI input, but unfortunately it's not activated on this particular model. And what that means is, just like another model that we checked out in the past, this is a full Wi-Fi or wireless only projector model. I personally would have still liked to see this port though, uh, for example, example, if you had a console system, like a gaming console, it would have been nice to still have this as a secondary option, but overall, it is what it is. Now, the very bottom here also features soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk, along with a mini tripod mount. Speaking of, there is actually a mini tripod also included in the box that was underneath the charging cable um, that's actually made pretty well out of aluminum and stainless steel, so you can actually set it up to kind of project images on the wall. A volume is pretty similar to other mini projectors that we've seen using Pico technology. The last one here that we reviewed from Apeman also has 480p. You can see most of these are a bit more flat. That's more of a conventional shape. Very easy to take with you when you're on the road. So our projector is now turning on because it's loading the Android operating system. It takes a few seconds longer to completely boot, about 20 seconds in my testing. Now, a slight flickering that you see on camera is actually invisible to the human eye. It's just a slight issue with the camera's frame rates. Uh, but in fact, if we kind of make it a little bit less bright by turning on the lights, you can see the effect isn't quite as obvious. Uh, but it's a pretty vivid looking image for such a small projector. It uh, definitely is visible even right now where we have a little bit of background light on. The image here is currently being stretched to a size of around 60 inches or so, uh, and we can still make out plenty of detail if we're going to zoom in that even smaller text here and details. Uh, icons still look very good. So the UI here is quite simple. It's reminiscent of some Android TV boxes. It's easy to navigate with the four-way controls of the remote, and you're able to cycle through some commonly used apps. Things like turning on or off Wi-Fi, accessing Bluetooth can all be turned and accessed at a flick of a key. Over here, you can clear the system RAM to make it 
perform a little bit more quickly. Uh, the system specs are fairly entry level as far as, uh, say, Android TV boxes are concerned. It is running on a quad core chipset from MediaTek, but seems to do the trick. Projector settings allow us to turn on or off functions like auto rotation and auto keystone, where we are able to uh, kind of tilt the image, such as pointing downwards. You can see it automatically adjusts the keystone and angle of tilt to make the image completely flat, regardless of how we are kind of pointing it upwards or downwards. So it can automatically compensate for itself. Also, if we flip the projector upside down, you can see the image also will flip with us. That works really surprisingly well. System here has about 2 gigabytes of RAM and also about 16 gigs of built-in storage, which is again sufficient for just uh, streaming content. Now if we go into the list of all applications, from here we can see a app store called Apptoid, and this is really a specialized uh, version of apps that you'll find mostly for streaming back content and for watching videos. TV versions of YouTube, Netflix, Facebook can all be downloaded, Prime TV, and installed without any problems. Again, this part takes up very little space. Six, 16 gigs will not really be occupied unless you're saving video files directly onto the machine. Additional built-in apps include MX Player Pro, and there's also a built-in video player. So if you have any offline content loaded using the uh, thumb drive, you can read it off of this and it will play it back. And we have the mirroring tools. Uh, there's actually three which are the most important. The first one called iMirror, as the name implies with the i, is designed for Apple products. It's actually a really simple process. All you need to do is pull up the notification uh, shade here, tap on screen mirroring, and it will find the uShare pretty much automatically, and tap on it once, and the content will be basically transferred over. There is a slight moment of lag, but overall the speed and responsiveness is still quite good. Navigating along still feels quite smooth. Colors here, we have kind of a drawing app, and you can see the vibrancy is uh, being represented actually pretty well as we are kind of sketching along and everything still looks uh, pretty impressive. So we want to jump into a very quick demo of a video. What's really cool here is it also isn't going to completely mirror uh, the content in all cases, such as using YouTube actually supports AirPlay. So the video will be playing on the larger screen while the phone can still be used to control things and interact with other apps. So it almost becomes like a Chromecast or a dongle in that sense. Again, it creates a pretty cinematic experience for watching back clips Things like YouTube, shorter movies, lying in bed, against a wall, it all does a surprisingly good job. As long as you're in a reasonably dark environment, you'll still get a very enjoyable experience uh, when you're watching back content. And here's a quick demo of the speaker quality on this projector. You actually control the sound using the remote, so you're able to turn it up and down by using these two keys. So as a whole, the quality of the speaker that's built in is also above average. In fact, it's one of the better ones I've tried out of a small Pico projector. It surprisingly doesn't sound too tinny, even if you push the volume higher, has a good amount of uh, mids, which uh, kind of makes the audio sound pretty smooth and pleasant to your ears, uh, even though it doesn't you know, pack too much of a punch in terms of bass. So that's the iMirror app, but you also have access to the uShare app, and this one here is meant for sharing the screen of other devices such as Android and computers like Windows. In this particular case, you have to visit a website domain. You can type into the browser of your device. Visit that domain here and type it into our browser. It will pop up with this page that says you share for Android, iPhone, iPad, Windows, and you can simply tap there to download the corresponding app. So here we have the application on our computer downloaded, again called you share. And uh, once opened up, it can find any of the projectors or dongles nearby, tap on connect, and our display now will basically be mirrored on the projector. It's pretty easy, and you, all you need to do is tap on this key once to disconnect, and then tap again to connect to the unit. There's still a little bit of latency, so as we move our cursor around, you can see it sometimes jumps in a slightly slower frame rate compared to, say, if we were connected using HDMI. So again, for the purposes of gaming, it might not be the best projector for that. Uh, smaller details might be a little bit harder to uh, fully make legible. It starts to become a bit more blurry since, again, the 480p native resolution really isn't 
build for that um, unless we kind of zoom on in. But uh, for watching videos, of course, the effect is still more than sufficient. Here's a trailer of um, kind of a Netflix produced TV show, Kingdom, and you can see that the overall experience is also pretty good. Um, overall still is very enjoyable for watching back media content with subtitles, things like that, which are a little bit larger in font size, still work without any problems. Really the final thing that I want to point out is there's one last mirroring option, which is called WPS mirroring. Some of you guys may know that this is a company that makes a freeware version of Office editing tools uh, similar to OpenOffice. So basically this is a version of an app that you can also mirror content uh, that's related to PowerPoints, Excel, and Word docs, and you can share that over. So it's more of a business uh, professional use case, uh, which as aforementioned I don't think is the strongest case, but it is an app that's built on in here by default. Final pieces to point out here, there is a small light on the power key that will flash when it's actually turned on, which is pretty neat. And also it's very quiet. So if we put this close to our camera here, that's basically the fan noise. It's almost invisible. Uh, more, more quiet than even computers that have a running fan. It's one of the most silent projectors I've ever tried. So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the Ponsai Smart Pico Projector. Again, this unit, which has all the wireless options built on end thanks to the Android operating system that it runs on. Performance is also quite good considering the small size, even though it doesn't have the highest native resolution in the world, and the presence of a full-size HDMI port I think would still be nice to see. But as a whole, I think it's a pretty decent option if you're looking for a pocket projector just for watching videos for and easy to take with you when on the road. So if you're interested, you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.